So let's get started with Ritwik. Okay, so Ritwik, get started. Okay, yeah, um, let me share my screen. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Uh, can everyone see this? Oh, I'm sorry. I was on mute. We can see. Go ahead, honey. Okay, sure. So my topic is the effectivity of amyloid beta immunotherapies on amyloid plaque in Alzheimer's patients. And yeah, my name is Rithik Tomo Salvin. I go to Alliance Academy. It's in Cumming, Georgia. And yeah, so my hobbies include debate, piano, reading. And over here, you can see this is an image of me. And then these are a lot of my friends. This is from the last debate tournament I went to. It was in Lambert High School. It was definitely very fun. And this is the picture of the Alliance debate team. I actually ended up winning that tournament. And yeah, I really do enjoy debate just because it's a very logical thing. It's very fun. And it builds a lot of skills. And moving on. Okay, so yeah, my topic is about amyloid beta immunotherapies and their effects on both amyloid plaque concentration and clinical decline. So uh, let's take a step back. What is this whole topic about? So first let's talk about um, immune, like antibodies. So what are antibodies? Everyone knows that antibodies are part of the immune system, but what are they specifically? So basically an antibodies are these protein components that circulate through your blood and recognize foreign invaders and deal with them. So they're actually made up of four polypeptide chains, which as you can see here, it's in a Y shape. And these make up heavy chains and light chains. They're connected. This hinge area is made up of a disulfide bridge, but uh, you, just to simplify, you can just call it the hinge. There's a constant region and a variable region. The main thing you have to know is just the variable region is which the part that binds to the antigen. And yeah, so moving on from that, these antibodies, this builds into my whole topic because these antibodies are the things that are going to be used in these immunotherapies to directly target this amyloid plaque concentration in the brain, which is just these anti- amyloid beta proteins that build up in the brain. And by targeting this area in the brain, we can reduce clinical decline, which is basically just the deterioration of like your functions that older amyloid, older Alzheimer's patients have. And yeah, so the specific research questions I set up to answer are, is this the best course of action? And which of these is the most effective in accomplishing its objectives? And I really believe that this is important because not only do millions of people around the world have Alzheimer's disease, it's a very serious condition which causes a big deterioration of mental functions. And not only is that a strain on the patient themselves, but think about it, their family also has to suffer. I personally don't have anybody like in my family with Alzheimer's disease, but I do have friends who talk about this. And I've seen just how hard it can be for them seeing their loved ones deteriorate. And yeah, let's move on to the literature review. So my literature was mainly just a bunch of uh, case studies and studies. And a big part of that was from the New England Journal of Medi Medicine. It's basically just a really prestigious journal that's peer reviewed, that has a lot of these different studies from a lot of these different professionals. An example of that is I used a paper from Emory University down here in Georgia, and it was just talking about the different immunotherapies. And it showed that there is this for like progression there is this like actual benefit because it does remove amyloid plaque however we have to like they state that we have to keep like testing this because we have to understand what happens more and yeah let's move on and then let's go on to the methodology and results so my results have through all my research all the things i discovered i found out that out of the six immunotherapies i did with each of these like special names they're, they're, they have these like little names called denanibab, lecanibab. They're kind of hard to pronounce. But anyway, out of these six immunotherapies, I found out that two are actually effective and they actually do have results on both decreasing amyloid plaque concentration and clinical decline, which is important because this is what these immunotherapies are made for. The other four, or to be specific, the other three, babapanuzumab, ponizumab, and gontranumab are found to be ineffective. They don't actually have any like 
a thing to do with the amyloid plaque concentration. They don't slow clinical decline. There weren't really any results. However, cronizumab, this third one, it's, it's relatively new, so there's not really many studies, but as I found, there's actually a lot of potential for it to be effective, so there needs to be more studies done. So anyway, let's move on. So the next part of the results, my second research question, I found that the Dunanimab is actually the most effective. It has the most studies documenting its effects on amyloid plaque levels and clinical decline lowering, and it's even awaiting FDA approval after submission in 2023. And I found out that gantinurumab, the this one, the last one, is actually the least effective. With it has no effect on both clinical decline and amyloid plaque levels, and studies are even being shut down early for futility. And yeah, here is just an example of all the different um, immunotherapies. It just I just put this visual to show you that while they're all passive amyloid beta immunotherapies, they each have their own differences in different components, which is why it's important to find out which one is the most effective. So we need to know how to make the future antibodies. And yeah, let's go on to the conclusion. So my first research question, is it warranted? I found out that yes, it is actually warranted. This is a very good way to go about treating Alzheimer's disease. And I believe that further research should be conducted on not only existing, but new immunotherapies to be, um, prioritized and specifically it should focus on the ones that are effective which we know are donanimab and lecanimab and it should new antibodies should be focused on being made like these two and which of these are the most effective as we found out donanimab is actually the most effective with most studies finding that has the most effect on amyloid plaque levels and clinical decline even awaiting fda approval and let's go on to the contributions. I believe that these contributions are important because we need to find the most effective and efficient way of going about treating Alzheimer's disease just because of how severe this is and how many people it affects. Using these findings, there should, I hope that the root of research on these immunotherapies can be determined and be as efficient as possible. And I found that as it's warranted, more research should be going along this path. And for limitations, this is focused on just passive AV immunotherapies. And because there's lots of different types, like they're active, and other immunotherapies that aren't amyloid beta, I focused on just these, just because I found that these are the most relevant immunotherapies and the most important ones being tested right now. And yeah, while immunotherapies itself are only one of the many Alzheimer's disease treatments being developed, I found that results have shown that this is a key instrument in the road towards treating Alzheimer's disease, which is why I believe it's really important. And yeah, let's go on to my research experience with Gift of Gabber. So Harf, first of all, Harf, Professor Varki, through his lectures, not only was I able to choose my topic, because going in, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I was not only able to choose it, I was able to expand my knowledge. Even if all the lectures didn't have, have everything to do with just my topic, I was just expanding my broad knowledge on neuroscience, which would definitely help me in my future. And not only that, but the guidance of my one-on-one -on -one helped me choose my structure. I didn't know how to like structure my topic or how it was going to go, but his advice helped me build my structure in my paper to be as effective as possible in getting my point across. So my heartfelt thanks to Professor Varki for making this paper possible. Additionally, let's, I would like to give a lot of thanks to Professor Virgil. Through his guidance and expertise, I was able to write my paper. I didn't know how to write a research paper going in. I, this seemed like a big mountainous task, but through his lectures and through his process, I was able to create... Like I was able to slowly piece by piece make my research paper and he was able to create an easy path for me to walk. Additionally, through his advice and one-on-one -on -one sessions, I was able to like tweak my research paper to show and make my topic as effective and come out as impactful as possible. So my heartfelt thanks again to Professor Virgil for making this paper possible. Overall experience, this program was really, really helpful. It guided me through the entire process of guiding, making a research paper and it builds all the crucial skills that I know are going to be important not only in my educational career but my professional career. I was also able to explore my interest in the healthcare field and further cement my passion. So I'm really, really thankful to Gifted Gaver for giving me this amazing opportunity. And once again, the most thrilling aspect or what I thought was the most cool part of this whole thing was just allowing me myself to see my paper built little by little at the start off, like building a whole research paper. It just seems like a really big task, like a whole research paper at my age. But through this thing, I was able to build it piece by piece. And I was able to see, wow, maybe, wait, maybe this is possible. And then little by little, I was able to see it crafted. And I was like able to expand my knowledge on things I never thought I'd know at this age. At the end, I was able to finish and just seeing my entire paper in front of me, it's like, wow, I made this. This, this is mine. I was able to make this research paper. I contributed to the medical community at this age. And now I know a lot more about neuroscience than when I started. So I'm really, really thankful to Gifted Gabber for making that possible.
And yeah, final thanks. Thanks for your attention. And finally, I'd like to give thanks to my family and friends making this possible and gifted at Gabber, making this whole thing possible. I really enjoyed myself and this was definitely a great experience. Thank you. Great job. Ritvik, you can stop sharing for a bit. Okay. Uh, great job. I just want to remind everybody um, we, we, speak, we are looking at a high schooler, not a seasoned uh, researcher. And, and you see here that I always believe that Gen Z gets a very bad rap, but actually their brains are like five times smarter than us. All they need is the right guidance. So uh, Dr. Jobin, you want to share a few words about Ritwik? Sure. Uh, Ritwik, I would just thank you for the acknowledgement. Uh, and I believe like... Uh, it's your hard work, uh, which has finally paid off. Uh, I could just like direct a little bit. And it's a very good presentation, excellent presentation. Uh, and like, I was, I'm actually like surprised, you know, like I'm not seeing high schoolers presenting with so much of clarity. Um, having said that, uh, uh, I would, I, let me see if there's any question. Is there any question from anyone? Um, Dr. Yeah. Jobin, uh, they will type the question in the chat and Ritwik okay. will answer them. Yes. Okay. You, you can ask Ritwik questions. Okay, Ritwik, just a, a simple one. Like, uh, why do you think that, you know, like I, based upon your uh, research that Donan Nabab, that's mm -hmm. the most effective one. Why do you think that one is more effective? Possible, like, you know, you don't know the actual reason, but what would be mm -hmm. the reason that it's more effective than other antibodies? Okay, so the reason I think Denimab is probably the most effective, or at least as we've seen the most effective, is I feel like it's like the way it's made up and what it specifically targets. So I don't know like the exact specifics of what it targets, but I believe just what, like how they, like the components that make up this specific antibody are the most effective in like specifically targeting the amyloid plaque. Okay. So I think you already have a question from someone. Okay, so, um, yeah. yes. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Ritwik. A round of applause uh, for Ritwik. <laughs>